Okay, good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for coming out today. Welcome to Rock Hill. For those that are not from Rock Hill, you're now at the, the site of the first cultural district designated by the state of South Carolina. And we're glad to have you here in downtown Rock Hill at the York County Arts Council. We're glad to have you here today to celebrate the bill signing. But it is a very difficult day for a lot of people, and we need to make sure we keep that in mind, that this is a difficult day. C.S. Lewis once said that most people don't need to be taught, they need to be reminded. And I would challenge us all as we're here today to see a bill signed, one that went through the General Assembly, went through the House, the Senate, signed by the governor, to come before us today. It took a lot of people to remember what makes us the great state of South Carolina. It's the people, the people that have been reminded yet again that in difficult times, in times of personal and community tragedy, that we have to look out first for our own, hug our children, love our parents, and do the things that we're called to do while on this earth. So it's with great satisfaction that I welcome the governor to our community to celebrate this event here, the signing of a bill, a bill that has a cost that is way too high for it to be written. And I would urge us all as we go forward from this day to recognize to get here required empathy, to get here required commitment, to get here required people to lead. And that is what separates this great state from so many others. So with that, I'll turn it over to Senator Clymer. Thank everyone for coming out. Um, Zari. Zari passed, but this is a monumental moment. Uh, Sunday would, be, would have been Gavin's 19th birthday. Um, so this weekend has been huge. Having all of his artwork here makes it special. Um, but with laws like this, what I'm most impressed by is with everything that's happened, it's been difficult to move forward. It's hard to get out of the bed each day and just get going. But this community, our state, everyone has rallied together to get this passed. And what we have done is we have sent the message, and this isn't a partisan issue, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican, Democrat, this is a situation of we've got children and we need to protect it. And every, protect them. Everyone came together and did that. I look at so many of the faces in the crowd that have helped get this done. Um, family members, my wife, my children, my parents. I'm just thankful. Um, but with the new law, with the sex extortion law, if you come after a child or an at-risk adult, you're going to be looking at up to 20 years. And if great bodily harm occurs, you'll be looking at an additional up to 20 years. We have federal laws in place, but this is spreading the awareness in the state of South Carolina and so that all of our children are aware and our parents are aware. And most importantly, Whenever it comes to suicide, understanding that it's okay to not be okay and not trying to act like we have it all figured out. We've got to realize that everyone struggles and that tomorrow needs us. Thank you everyone for coming out and introduce the governor. Well, I think it's been said, uh, Mr. Mayor, I got to say I'm glad to be here again. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all live in Rock Hill or how long you've been here, but this place is getting more and more beautiful every day. I think we have a, a renaissance of some kind going on in South Carolina. People from all over the place want to be here. And this really is a beautiful place. And for all of you to be here on this particular day to mark this, this event is is a uh, dramatic statement 
about what, what the mayor said was how we feel about each other. You know, if we all look after each other, that means everywhere we go as individuals, we have somebody looking at us, watching us, trying to keep us out of trouble, help us out. But we have to have laws that will send the message loud and clear to some of, these, some of these criminals. Some of them don't listen. Some of them have to learn the hard way. And I can remember just in, in my time how much easier it's gotten, how much, how much technology has changed over the years, how easy it is to communicate now, how difficult by comparison it was back then. When I was in the U.S. Attorney's Office, we had a man come speak to us named Kenneth Wooden, W-O-D-E-N. And he wrote a book called Child Lures. I looked it up this morning. It's still available. But back then, you know, Mama back then always said, don't talk to strangers. Well, that was good advice then. It's good advice now. And you remember the famous scene in Forrest Gump when he was getting on the on the bus and he, the lady opened the door to the bus and he looked up at it and she looked at him and she's chewing her gum and says, well, you gonna get in? And he says, my mama says, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> and she says, well, I'm Mary Smith or some name. And she, he says, well, I'm Gump, Forrest Gump. <laughs> and she said, well, we're not strangers now, so get on the bus. <laughs> and he did. I wish it was so innocent uh, again now, but it's not. But Ken Wooden talked about child lures, L-U-R-E-S, and I only remember two of them. But I reordered uh, ordered the book this morning to get back up to date. But one of them was the puppy lure. We didn't have the cell phones and all that then. It was a puppy lure, he called it. And that is, a, is typically an adult man with casual clothes on would be somewhere around the school and asking people if they'd lost a puppy. And finally, someone would talk to him, and he'd say, well, they'd say no, but he'd say, well, will you come look at this puppy and see if you know? And the child would go in and get in the car, and that'd be the end of that. Another one was the police officer lure. Well, a man in a dark-colored limousine, or um, um, sedan, would pull up at the school and would get out and tell the child, your, your mama's at the hospital or your daddy's at the hospital. You have to come with me right now child would get in the car and they'd go. But that required contact, all of those things. We don't have to do that anymore. Then came the internet. I remember when it got here, maybe you all do too. All of a sudden, you could talk to anybody anywhere almost. And, 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 to, and when I was in the AG's office, we found out that there were these predators coming over the internet to the children. And we ended up, some of the legislators may remember, and we bought computers, laptops, for various police stations that didn't have them and had courses for them to talk, teach them how to go on the Internet and pretend to be children so they could lure some of these predators in. And what we found, and we caught some, but what we found out then was a lot of these children talking to these predators did not think they were talking to children. They knew they were talking to adult men. But for some reason they were attracted. But now, now we've gotten to where it's just off the scale. And any child with a phone, and everybody's got a phone, everybody is subject to attack, violent attack, by anybody anywhere in the world. And it is a horrible thing. And one thing we can do to, to stop it is what we're doing today. And this, uh, this certainly was a tragedy. And I came, you know, this morning on the news, I was watching about a young man, 17 years old, in Michigan, exactly the same thing. And there have been others all over the place. And the thing that strikes me is, is, is the, these young men, typically, who react so dramatically, must be fine young men to be so ashamed like they've let their parents down and friends and that they take such drastic action. But we got to do all we can to stop this. The FBI, I read, reported 
from uh, 21, from year 21 to 22, these kind of things are up 463%. They have what they call artificial technology where they can take an innocent picture, put your face on some other photograph and spread that all over the world. We are really in very dangerous territory. And I promise you there are, there are people out there who do this for various types of satisfaction and gratification, but others that do it for the money. So you, and just to think, every criminal out there with the ease of access that they have to our young people, how easy it is just to sit wherever they are, typically in another country, and do this all day long. And of course, the young people send money and that's, that's how these, this criminal enterprise thrives. So, Brandon Guffey and your family, uh, this is a tragedy for you. It's a tragedy for our state, for all our people. But we are, are doing something. We're taking a step that is going to save the lives of other children, other young people. And of that, we can be very proud and thankful. Uh, even joyous, but I believe that this gives us one more opportunity to understand how precious life is, how vulnerable these young people are, how important they are to our future, because as Brandon has said, they are, they are our tomorrow. So I want to thank all of you for being here, for supporting this wonderful family, for supporting this state, and always... Um, Remember to tell your children that South Carolina is the best place in the world to live, work, and raise a family. And if you got a good southern accent, hold on to it because it's worth money these days. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any, any questions on topic for anyone here? Okay. In that case, we'll sign it.